Hello everybody, Nian here again, and I am playing more Dawn of War Dark Crusade. And I th think that, well at first I need to end my turn and we'll watch what all the other armies do. And that may affect what I decide to do next, because if the Necrons decide to reinforce that area, then I won't invade there. But the right so they haven't but I think what I will do is I will be quite bold and attack the orcs base once I've attacked it and it becomes mine I think that it will eliminate the orcs from the game and to have your first elimination after two rounds is pretty spectacular but it's also very daring I will add my Tau on a guard to this because it, I will need units as soon as I sp spawn in. I will need to probably turtle for quite a bit, Those but also go face the same challenge the Tau had faced on Cronus for generations. Pushing the orcs back from the deserts and cities was one thing, but dislodging them from the jungle was another altogether. Even the legendary Tau leader, Commander Farsight, had failed to purge the orc-infested swamps of the Green Coast. Still, a complete purge wasn't necessary to break Gorguts. The Warlord had cobbled together his great horde, or Va, in the parlance of the alien, from a large number of fractious clans and tribes. So long as the Warlord led the Wa to victory, their clan's loyalty was assured. But with enemies assailing them in their very homes, discontent reared its head among the orcs. Secondary chieftains wondered if they might not make better warlords than Gorguts. With these fissures in the war widening, the orcs' enemies struck. They drove deep into the green coast, hoping to eliminate Gorguts himself and plunge the horde into infighting and rebellion. For warlord Gorguts, the only solution was to crush the attackers under unrelenting waves of orc warriors. Now what it sounds like from the sort of spiel at the start is that there will be, because I'm invading a base, there will be secondary missions. And from this it sounds like one of the secondary missions will be to try and defeat some probably warlords, like secondary warlords to and take over some str probably critical locations, I think, uh, to fracture the war. And I think I'm not. It's been an, it's been a while since I last played and decided to go for the orcs. But we'll soon find out. And we've got another cutscene. Well, the previous wasn't a cutscene really. You can sneak about without me boys seeing ya. You think you can come for me, Ed? Orcs is never beaten in battle. Shut it, ya grot. The rest of them are coming and we got to be ready. Tell the boys there's some killing to do. I made them big banners to remind the clans that they better keep their boys in line. I don't want no squigheads looking to fight me when the enemy's right here. Gorguts is the war boss. Got it, you muck suckers? This here voicey box let him talk to you. So open your ears. Listen up, your grots and squigs. They's coming for us like we some kind of human kids. But we ain't. We's the orcs, and this here is gonna be one great fight! So get your choppers and your shooters ready, boys, cause there's some killing to do. Head crushers, you ready? <laughs> Foot stompers, you squiggers and sacks ready? 
Okay, so what this cutscene makes me think is that I'm going to have to destroy some war banners. And because of that... Right, so the objective screen is being brought up because there will be multiple ones instead of just the standard kill the headquarters that there is in the other sectors. And however, the good thing about this map is it's like other base maps. It is it's meant to sort of give you a tiny bit of a helping hand. You have three defensible positions. However, I am directly under fire. And as you can see, I have been directly harassed to start with. I think that once I've fi finished these off, they will let me to build. And fortify. And my Vespid Stingwings have finished. And I have some Fire Warriors as well. And now I just have the mega armored knobs and the siege tank to take down and I should be left to expand. Right, so I will dual capture these points. Is there something still attacking me? I'm not sure. I need a path to enlightenment to find out. In fact, I will capture that one as well. Because... Oh no, I actually yes it is. Hmm. This is quite strange, but... I will need a path to enlightenment to get my... And I have some more orcs inbound. However, I have a small army, but an army nonetheless to defend. That's captured. Send in the reinforcements. That's the listening post up and running. Unfortunately, I won't have enough power to fortify it. So I will build a generator instead. Point 
I'll go for the knob leader because once that's done it should become a lot easier to manage Right, so that's finished. Build the fortification there and build the listening post there. One of the annoying things about the tower is that only one of the units can detect infiltration without another additional research and that is only if you have a certain tech well you, you need the path to enlightenment and that's and you need it um, however what I will do is I will get those troops ready I will place a snare here so that what if any orcs do come up the ramp they will be thwarted fortify that add-on and get the builder building another plasma generator And I have another wave of orcs inbound. However, my priority is getting a, a squadron of pathfinders so I can find out and destroy the tank that's infiltrated and is attacking my base. I will set that turret on there and I will heal that turret. And I now have enough to build the path to enlightenment. And I will requisition an additional drone warrior. Drone warrior? Drone. Um, drone builder, that's it. Now, I may not be talking as much this episode, but this is because I'm concentrating very much on what I'm doing and making sure that, that, that my micro and macro are making sort of sense of what is going on. I will see if I can place a snare there and get it to hook the... By, by the looks of it, it's now two vehicles that are there at the moment. I will build three more sets of Tau Warriors.
and Path to Enlightenment done. Instantly get a set of Pathfinders because I need them. I'll put one on there. I'll rail gun that one once I have the power. And I will listening post that one up. There we go. Now that they can see what they're shooting at, that is that dealt with. That was a bit annoying until I had the tech up that could deal with it. And in comes another attack. This time it's the Storm Boys. But they are ex they, well, they're not extremely lightweight, but they are pretty lightweight and easy to deal with. I think that, yes, I can now railgun up this. That's almost finished. That has finished. I will get a vehicle beacon if I can find room for it somewhere. There we go. And now assign two to that. And set that to attack that unit. And leave my troops to deal with what's coming up the ramp. I will re reassign that to that listening post, given that that tends to be the one that's getting the brunt of the force. And I will railgun that as soon as possible. That's almost finished the railgun upgrade. But I need 50 more energy in order to be able to get that operational. So what I will do is once I have got railguns on my listening posts I think I shall heavily fortify the this gauntlet here. I will get probably two XV-88s on each end and then put a couple of gun drones in and I have enough power to fortify not that one, but that one. And I shall build a power generator there. And I will get two drones on it because I want that power. I'm getting quite a lot of requisition. But I will try and gather up my units. Annoyingly, they don't go in a close formation. I can't quite find sort of how to get them into close formation, but I don't think that they can go into that close formation. But I've got enough power for an XV88. And get more power. And I now have two rail guns defending my area against the siege tank. I will probably need to delegate a drone to that rail gun just to make sure that it actually stays functional. And there goes my XV-88. Population's full. So I guess I should probably... I will take the commander out. But I will move them down into the gauntlet. And start firing on the siege tank. And there's a killer can there, not really doing that much. But I don't really want it near my units. And there goes a siege tank. And a ton more orcs. I'm going to move my XV-88 battle suit further down my ramp.
And now to entrench him, which will bring my total railgun count to three. Trench's second XV-88. And my commander has gone down, but I can re-requisition him. I still have a team of Fire Warriors. I will get them to attack the knob leaders and the mega armored knob. And that is the attack thwarted. And now I have my third XV-88. I'll place him at the bottom of the hill. And I will de-entrench him. And place him on the ramp as well. However, I do know that there is a orc base here. In reasonably cr close proximity. In fact, it's just around the corner. And a tiny bit of visual lag. Not entirely sure why, unless it's just uh, something I'm deciding to overheat. But seems to be locked at six frames a second, which is extremely odd. And none of my units want to move. Ah, there we go. I think he might actually be getting stuck on the other XV-88. Oh yeah, I think he's getting stuck on some of the bodies. There is a lot of bodies. Nope, doesn't want to move. Yeah, keeps getting stuck on the other one for some reason and not finding an alternate path. Oh well. I'll entrench both of them. And get that one down the ramp. And yet another battle thwarted. And I think what I will do is I will get a devil fish out and and three squadrons of fully reinforced fire warriors. And they what they what I will do is I will fly the devil fish into an em enemy base and see what they have. I will also just build an XV-15 stealth suit team and just go on a preliminary scout. I'm using all infiltrated units and I will use this XV because they're pretty cheap before and if I send a devil fish in with fully reinforced squads that's uh, roughly a thousand requisition just I'm getting close to 2,000 requisition at the moment and I've still got quite a low frame rate for some reason 
which is a little bit disturbing, but anyway. I think I will actually capture that. Oh, not with the Fire Warrior team, no. I want I don't want you actually to go up there. I want you stealth suits. No, stop firing th things. I'll set you on peaceful stance. And this will allow me to see in advance if there are any attacks coming or not, as the case may be. I can see that there is some fortifications and I think this might be one of the bases that I need to go for. Mm, my population is full so far so I will build a Montcar command post and that should let me increase my build limp will not build limit but population limits and there appear to be some Gretchens and I'll put it on aggressive mode oh and yes de de destroy the head crusher's banner which is there it doesn't look as though there's too much however I could easily be mistaken they could bring reinforcements through this area and into here I know it wants me to de destroy the one here, which I haven't scattered out, but I will destroy this anyway because that boy's hut is dangerous. However, that infantry unit being defeated did allow me to have the remaining units of the advanced squadron reinforced and deployed. And that presumably means that there's another attack coming. Yep. From both directions, I'm assuming. No, not one from that direction. From the north. However, my railgun's making pretty short work, by the look of it, of the killer can. However, the all the other units making light work of my... And I will deploy my fire warriors and get them on it as well. One of my XV-88s has gone down. And my other might. However, I will still have one to fall back upon. And I will... That will finish shortly and I will be able to... That's finished. Repair. And I've got a big mech coming up. But I will... Board up. Two squads of eight. And I will reinforce that and place down that down in the gauntlet. Bring it round by that end. It might be hard for the devilfish to actually get through the gap, but I will try. No, I will have to de-entrench that, and I will actually move it down into the position that it used to in to leave live in. Deploy. And I got an army incoming by the looks of it.
I will try and get the sea the killer can as weak as possible before it comes in the oh and they can see me the mega armored knobs is able to see infiltrated units however it is faster than most other things and so I will drop and fortify that area and forgot to entrench that however and then I've taken down its one of the gun emplacements I may go to burn stance so that they j uh, they'll just ignore the other orcs Mm, all my squadrons are on low morale. We will cut them down. Our duty calls, now I do have a lot of units dying, but it should all being well loosen their stronghold around the area that I'm in and allow me to push out. And I'm down to my eight fire wa fire warrior squadron. For some reason, they always seem once one has m been melee aggro, they all rush in as melee aggro. For some reason, and that's just annoying. And however, it looks as though they will all be snuffed out. So maybe next time I will need to go in with more vehicles. So I will start with the Devilfish. Three Fire Warriors and an XV-8 instead of the 88. But this is a battle suit and I should be able to just jetpack in. Or maybe get two. And then that will be quite good as reinforcements. Reinf repair that post. There's my devil fish, and there's my squad. Reinforce it. I have a ton of re resources, however, the Tau don't have a very good building limit. So, it is quite annoying, but either way. I might as well get all the improvements because they will probably help me in the long run And I have a big mech heading up towards the base. And I also have contact from the north. There we go. I have a crisis battle suit. Fire team is ready. Fire 
and two fully reinforced squads and one that's about 20 seconds away for reinforcements. So this is my strike force by the looks of it. What I will do is I will get missile pods for that one and flamer for that one so that what I can do is I can set the one with a flamer to go for to go for the infantry units and I can get the one with the missile pods to just concentrate on the buildings both of these have a ton of health points so they should be able to tank whilst my devil fish sorts out the rest and I can jetpack them in in advance and then take stuff out my other one doesn't seem to have taken off there we go take out that wire barrier and I have a big mech on the way in and a mega armored knobs and I don't know, there's my devil fish and I'll bring that down here and then it can use its its uh, burst cannons to defend and I will drop all my tower warriors right here and then it will be a party And I think I will... How is this healing? That's healing very slowly. I may wait for a tiny bit before I do my next plan. Which is to get these two XV-8s to just jetpack in. Complete the second objective. Weaken their su support forces masses. And just generally own them. And we have a mega armored knob here who will get taken out pretty quickly. And I will pull them back instead of going for the siege tank. kill their war banners. What war banners do for orcs is they work, at, they, they, they give them a resource called war which is an additional resource, no other force uses it. But what it does is it allows them to build sort of their big mech, wa mech things and so the more that you take down the easier it gets for you to fight them. And currently just flaming all of their flaming all of their forces and we're down to one in the area which is currently take doing quite a good job of taking out that mech and I think I will devil fish in if I have a devil fish no I don't I will get a devil fish and I will de devil fish in a work and then capture that strategic point and then what that will allow me to do is I can get the worker to build me a barracks and generally that will allow me to produce XV8s 
closer to the action. There would be my devil fish. Load my worker up onto it. And that's my second crisis. And I have a large force coming in from the south. I will pull my squads back. And because then I can let the railguns do quite a lot of work. And it will allow them to stay in range. And I will s make them hold ground instead of stand ground. Which means that they won't go chasing after anything too crazy. I now have three. I will go for two flamers and one missile. Sending in a Mega Armored Knobs. I think that's the one that I fought earlier. But with the railguns on the XV-88s, combined with the fairly heavy fire f coming from the Tau Warriors, I will also drop in two Fire Warriors as two Fire Warriors squads as support. I will send in the XV-8s. And I don't know why they just went over there. The exact opposite way. No problem. No problem. No problem. Get them to go over here. And I think I will have to individually select them to jump. that my units are getting slightly stuck again. There we go, and now I should have enough room to jump. And there's my three battle suits. Bring the devil fish around if it wants to move. Just did a nice pirouette. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Devilfish swim silently. We will get our men there. Fire team is ready. And I think I will secure the northern strategic point with those fire warriors. Devilfish swim silently. Unload them there. make that squad fall back due to difficulties but I should be able to make a good second base down into orc territory here yeah I think all of that squad has gone down I will jump one of my XV-8 back, that's the one with the flamer to help out with the and now I can jump it back and upgrade that and with that I shall build a Tau Barracks. 
I've seen the AI try to do this a number of times where it builds barracks in, an, in a number of places. Personally, I don't do it that often because I just tend to go for the quick kill. I.e. I spawn in a ton of um, sort of smaller, well not smaller, but I spawn in a ton of vehicles and then just go from there. That's upgraded once, now to upgrade it twice. And I should be able to spawn in an additional XV8 here. I know that's limit 3. However, I will spawn in probably an XV8 T8 just to hold this post a bit better. I'll keep that worker here. And however, I will send in the XV8 T8. Get the devil fish. And two of them have the flamers which make extremely light work of any ground unit. And I will get them to walk in. I'll just get them to walk into the base. I won't jetpack them in because then they will be surrounded by units. And the dual flamers making very light work of these area because of the area effectness. That's it, boys. Give them the pointy ends. I will drop the fire warriors. And drop. And get the war banner. And now a nice cutscene. Go, guys! I so tough. Get him. And now I have a. And now I have a ton of orcs on my side. And I have the head crushers helping me now. At least I think helping me for now. Cut them down. We will get all in there. However, I will clean up this whole area just to make sure that I don't have anything untoward coming from here. One of my XV8s has gone down, but I don't have to go as far in order to respawn it. And now I just have a couple of wa war banners to go, 
and that should be it for clan head crushers. And now I've started pushing out and securing this area. The the other my main base isn't coming under so much aggression. I will actually get this strategic point and reinforce it just so that I have the warning. Yeah, there's a big mech on its way. Nope, not big mech, mega armored knobs probably scouting to see how much stuff I have left at the base but I have those two XV-88s there and I will create another XV-8 and I will entrench Repair that. And listening post. And there's my squadron. I lost a flamer, so I will put the flamer on. And I will jump once, and then I will have another jump just to get to where I need to go. Technically this is supposed to be an emergency jump, but it can't tell whether it's in an emergency or not. And I have my four units, low pro, well technically three units, but three in an infiltration. And I will push north as it looks as though there's another orc war base up north. Oh really? And I will finish them. Devilfish swim silently. And yes, it looks as though this is definitely another base here, but no big war banner. Oh no, the quick mechs, and this is going to be a very mech. My devilfish has gone down, but that leaves a swarm of other, well, a swarm of various things and this is the part where stuff tends to start dying because the quick mechs are very very well very very powerful because they are mechs but my flamer seems to be taking care of the ground forces my missile I will set on the big mech all my ground units are pretty much down and I have two battle suits here ah it looks as though that this listening post was swamped at some point, but it did manage to hold off most of the battle. But I can we can begin to spawn in XV eighty eights well XV eights again. And I will send them off with a number of XV eighty eights again and just go for a full heavy weapons. I will also get a s couple of 
about five sky rays and I will set my rally point to up here and it's just full sky ray and everything I think I will put you needed fire support. missile pods on most of my XV8s as I will be going up against a lot of vehicles and I can see that there's a unit inbound put a flamer on and jump it up to here Now that's the big war banner that I've got to destroy. And I will just see if there's any point which I can probably get in quickly to. If I get my army. And I have storm boys incoming. I shall let the flamer deal them out. And I think I have yet more incoming. Yes, I've got some slugger boys. And there's a cup. There's an XV88. And I can't see my fire support. I thought I set the rally point. Ah, it's getting them past the entrenched XV-88. So, not very good pathfinding. From the sky rays. But I now have four or five missile gunships to join my attack. And I shall bring them up round the top and that will give me pretty good access to that banner. At least I think I can get up that ridge. Yes, that's a achievable ridge. And I'm moving out with a lot of heavy weapons. And I will wait for that last Skyray to catch up. With the sky rays, I think I will be pretty much spamming the heavy missile attack. For Tau to prosper, it will be so. For Tau to prosper, it will be so. What you might see in the uh, left hand corner, lower left hand corner is it's just gone now but strategic point has nearly decayed now the decaying of the strategic points is I think to try and make sure that people keep expanding on and sort of trying to capture more strategic points in order to sort of because it produces Produces some like two less. Acquiring targets. Acquiring targets. And I will. Acquiring targets. Go, 
Gorgats is Big Ben and got blown up. Gorgats is a crock hood of that one. I should be boss. No way. I's the boss now. Acquiring targets. I will proceed to clear this camp out just like the last one. And uh, there shall be even fewer mobs to go. I appear to have lost an XV88. XV88. XV8. Tailed like the number 8. The XV88 heavy broadside battle suit providing good missile coverage. And I will stay out the way whilst that layman rust tank and the settlement duke it out. Though I think I might fire a few shots off at the settlement. Just because I can get them in the blast radius. There we go, that's the settlement down. And I've just got Damek shop left to go. Got another attack back here, but again. My XV-88 and railgun forces should be ample. And I think I also... No, I don't have a Skyray vehicle limits full. And... I shall move up, kill that generator. And that's War Banner. I will entrench that battle suit for now. The patient hunter gets the prey. The patient hunter Just to targets. get those railguns up and running. Acquiring targets. And I shall bombard that war tower. Makes it quicker for the rest of us. For tower to prosper, it will be so. And move up to check if I will actually send a battle suit to check if there's anything in the top corner that I need to worry about. I know there's an orc listening post. But yes, it appears that there is a bigger generator and I will emergency him out of there. And hold a position here. I may even be able to from here, no I can't, I'll need to go back into the base and out to go through here into the main base. That would be pretty... I want to say unorthodox but I have a feeling that quite a lot of players do it. I'm quite a cautious player. I like to turtle for quite a while until I've got a big army and then just go and sort of just go around the map killing everything like I'm doing at the moment. Another annoying thing about the pathing is that they can't seem to overtake each other. So if you've got a slow unit in front of a fast unit, the fast unit won't overtake. They just go very linearly in one direction. And I shall wait until I get to that threshold. I can see there's a war tower there. I will barrage that, though I think that's the back of the pack that I've got. Acquiring targets. And here comes the bombardment, I think. That's what usually what the acquiring targets means. Nope, no bombardment this time. Let's 
that I am now in the foot stompers base and there is the wild banners I need a flamer that's got a missile I will take this XV88 I'll take that and just make a run for the banner if I can find it. Do do do. There it is. Go. And that pretty much takes it down to zero health. Oi! Gorgut's big banner just got itself stomped! We'll stomp all the Gorgut's his boys! And then this area over here looks as though it has more. Move fully into the base. That sky ray looks as though it's going to go down. Yep, we've got sky ray down. And then through that uh, sort of thing is the main base, which I need to defeat the Warlord in, and presumably whatever that big crash spaceship is. What is it good for? Ooh, Squiggeth. Presumably that's from the uh, leftover. Uh, wild orcs. No idea what they are. And that XV8 is probably going to not fare very well. And it didn't. However, I am also being attacked by the war track. But it's quite easy to dis just destroy all these. And I'm now down to three Skyrise and NXV8. Oh, and that is not good by the looks of it. Most of my infantry has been taken out. Do I have a spare? No, I don't have a spare worker. Train up a worker. And I will get my fire warriors out. And that's a squig off gone. No problem. We will deliver the killing blow. Our hunt begins. We will deliver the killing blow. 
and I will use my squads of fire warriors to slowly but surely take out the big mech and now the big mech's down that's the main threat of that and for some reason that Objective, kill. Oh, I've got this. Just kill the warlord now. Three sky rays. I'll send the XV8 in. is his main settlement which I'm going to lose my forces here I think I still have a battle suit which I will just use to pretty much scout that area got one of those build up some listening posts and use my 11,000 to reinforce all of these and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, two devil fishes And that should be nice. I have another three sky rays here, so I'll use them to accompany. And I think then I can no, I need to research Montcar teachings. Do I have yet more training? No, good. Because I've reached population limit. So, how many are fully ready? Fill up my first squads. That big mech is not going to stand a chance against my mast army. However, he can see the devil fish, so I will retreat that slightly. There we go. Now, how many eights do I have? I have four eights. And that's an eight. So I have two that can move out. Get that to build a listening post over there. And upgrade that. Those Sky Rays and XV88s finishing off the others. The uh, Orcs, what I, I didn't actually get to see what they were. And I will summon in a Hammerhead tank. Or airship or gunship or gunship, that's it. And that will re use up the remaining three of my vehicle cap. And I will then swarm the sort of base over here. Looks as though they've shot down a space marine plane. Or is that just an orc plane? No, it's an orc plane. I can tell by the checked pattern. That's the trademark of the orcs. That's complete. Upgrade. That's complete. Upgrade. There we go. 
Now I can conduct a proper assault of the base, and that should be it. I will wait for the hammerhead to get here, and then things will probably start to kick off. There we go. Six ships. I'll set a direct course. I won't bother to micro them too much. Unless I find some enemies that are on the way. Yeah, I'll need to micro them given that they're getting stuck on things. Sometimes a problem with these slightly older games is that the pathing a pathing pathing AI or pathing pathing how are you supposed to say that and uh, the the AI anyway isn't too good and they things get stuck on other things and stuff that isn't supposed to to, to be tangible becomes tangible and I will just cut across here. Take out that listening post. Acquiring targets. Ah, there's another banner apparently, which is there, but I won't bother with it. What you doing, Rocket Rangers? They's coming for ya. Attack! And now I have a direct path into the base, the enemy base. Unfortunately my own base isn't faring so well so I better make this quick. And that will either mean that I can create more units or it will mean I'm defeated. However I will line up some Tau units so as soon as those drop I should have another sets ready and I will micro these now I'm into the enemy base and I have a couple of mega armored knobs I will let these devil fish explode and then missile this area missile that boys hut And I'll save that devil fish troops. I'm still running on full squad, so I presume that no none of my massed army has gone down. I'll concentrate on the mech shop at the moment. So they can't produce anything much to stop me. And Gorguts will be hanging around in this area. There are his special units. Uh, I still have a missile that I haven't fired off. Which I won't use at the moment. Acquiring targets. 
Now there's Gorgut's the Warlord. And I will open fire. Everyone take him down. Hammerheads, do we have any missiles? Yes we do. That's a hammerhead. Devilfish. Yes, we can drop. Everyone fire on Gorguts. And he's almost down to half health. Ah, they're taking down my Montcar command post, which means that all I have left is the strategic points. And I have more missiles. Almost got yet another set of missiles. And I shall pop those. Now down to just his last few percentage points of health. And I have beaten it. This doesn't sound too good. Ah. The bomb you get. The bomb. There appears to be a bomb. I presume there will be an extraction point. Now the problem with this cutscene is it assumes that I've got crute, which I don't, because you can hear all the crute noises. However, have your tunnels dug and ready. You sure is smart, boss. Shut it, you git. I got me a whole war to rebuild. Now get me to gawk off of this here planet. And that is the orc battle. This has been an extremely long video. I'm estimating round about one and a half hours. And Thank you for sticking around for that long if you have stuck around for this long. And I will probably see you after this cutscene. Well, next time after this cutscene. Okais studied Farsight's tactics and used them in his assault on the Green Coast. By eliminating Warlord Gorguts, he plunged the Orc Horde into a cycle of infighting that effectively took them out of the battle for Cronus. Still, Aonel Shorez was hardly pleased that Cronus's jungle remained infested with feral orcs. Even with other opponents still to fight, the Ethereal directed significant numbers of fire warriors and crude carnivores to hunt the remaining orcs, taking back one square kilometer of jungle at a time. The Krut prove the most successful here, taking over much of the ecosystems of these areas in order to hunt down the orcs. Soon, the jungles of Cronus resembled the crude homeworld of Pesh more than anything. Okay, and I think I shall get war gear. Or not, as the case may be. Okay, so I think that's it for now. I will see you next time. I've been Nian, thank you for sticking around.